very possible to do so. Meanwhile, from Madness Esports, they do have a composition where they want to isolate the fight to allow this Beatrix to pop off and set up for those one-shot kills. So there is going to be a difference in approach when it comes to this playstyles. But based on the stats so far, Madness will be winning on Teamfight's utility late game and as well as pickoff potential, while Homeboys will be able to win in terms of the push strategy. So I'm looking forward to see how they equalize this match in game number three and who comes up on top. Execution and momentum have been the key words so far in this series between the Homeboys and Madness Esports. We have a lineup looking quite interesting and easier to execute against the Homeboys, which will require a lot of momentum and mid-game control. We'll find out which of these two teams will gain that all-important point to move up further in the rankings. Yep, and as of yet, homeboys, they do have this composition where they are very focused on towards Maima. So Maima is going to be the biggest threat for Madness Esports, but little did they know, they eventually need to find a way to deal with Sonic on this Frederick because as of now, they may have somewhat of a damage, but they do not have enough burst potential to completely shut down Sonic once the mid-game to late game is going to be coming in because as of yet, Sonic left completely unchecked. Homeboys also not looking for those kind of very, very aggressive invades we kind of expect from them coming from Game 1 and Game 2. In terms of momentum, it's actually Madness Esports that needs to control the tempo here. They have the way stronger early game composition, so they should be looking to gain a lead right now. But Homeboy is still maintaining. They just want to delay this game because their late game scaling super strong right here. In terms of the EXP lane as well, something interesting. This is Damage Joe. Was wondering if it was going to be a tank, but it is Damage Joe. Yeah, they do need those one-shot capabilities. And in this case, having a Damage Joe can potentially catch Anim off guard. Fortunately for Anim, he did go for the Purify instead of the Inspire or Flicker or even the Vengeance here coming to Anim. So he is going to play a little bit more safety, but Ooh. here comes oh boys. Yep, here they come. It's going to be GB and Barbosa coming in, looking for the jump in as GB doing a lot of damage to Zavs. Warlord somehow being first blood in the mid lane. Zavs following right afterwards. A one for one trade. What? Maimo was able to get the 1v1 down mid? How is that even possible? But at the same time, Subbot, he's looking for the aggression here in the Turtle Pit. Yeah, he's not going to be able to do much here. He's just providing vision for as long as possible before Sonic secures the turtle. Gonna try and engage. Appraiser's Wrath not going to do enough to finish him off as Chibi. He did not steal that away. Maima secures the purple buff for himself. Beautiful, beautiful stuff as well. Maima once again a stable force as a mid laner coming from Anna's Esports here. Doing so much for the team and denying all these entry points from Homeboys. And I like how Homeboys was able to find an opportunity to try and get a trade. And this is something that Maima is very, very experienced of after playing in MPO for so many times. They know that teams will tentatively find trades and pickoffs. And because of that integration and stealing from Buff, mm -hmm. it is going to put him in a very, very awkward spot. But now, homeboys! Barbosa wild charge onto Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel like he could have used that on Maima. Maybe secure the kill, but right now, going to delay this. Not going to look for too much aggression. Sonic gets the taunt onto Warlord. But it doesn't look like either side is going for kills right now. Yep, they tried to force a, uh, a fight against Maima uh, to try and bait out the Purify. Unfortunately, say the Purify is still available on Maima, so that is going to be a problem for him. And Sonic, it's going to be A-OK. -okay. There's nothing homeboys can really do against this Frederick yet. And this is a problem that I've talked about as well. They have solutions for this Farsa. If they're not utilizing this against Maima, Eventually, Sonic is going to get so out of control to the point that Maima is going to have this strong berry in front of them and he's going to drop artillery's armor on Homeboys. Personally though, I think if Homeboys can stay somewhat even in terms of net worth towards the mid game, they actually win out late because of Claude, because of Valentina. So Manus Esports do still have a timer on their heads. They gotta play around the mid-game timing because that is where they're going to be strongest. Well, this is all comes out down to picks and parcel because eventually homeboys, they will need to uh, try to get uh, some sort of kill potential. But Manus, they do scout this out. Mali, he's all by himself though. Ooh, this could be dangerous. He's able to back off for now. Barbosa, not looking for the end gauge despite being behind him. 
They want to set up for the turtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna be cutting wave up top. Sonic engaging. Numenon last. Gonna be charged up. Gets the stun onto the Fredrin. Here comes the blazing duet. Blair, better dare strike a bit too far back as Sonic is instantly taken out. Sonic somehow still gets the turtle despite dying in that exchange. But here comes Suba flickering forward. Double kill picked up by Warlord. Oh my goodness. This is huge from homeboys as well. We talked about problems for how they deal with Sonic. But when it's a 5v4, it's going to be absolutely worth it for them. But while this is actually happening here, as soon as Ye Ye showed himself up top, shoving the lane, Homeboys immediately collapsed on Madness Esports. And this is actually a good equalizer coming from both sides, if you think about it, because Homeboys, they desperately need more objectives, while Madness Esports is just denying them time and time and time again with those resources. Yeah, but look at the net worth difference. It is even right now. Homeboys are achieving their win condition right now, as long as they can continue controlling this situation, and Manus ideally needs to make something happen here. They have Maima, they have yeah, 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 set things up. They're looking for it now. Oh, they're gonna get the way of the dragon onto Sephat into the veteran airstrike, but this is a glue split split, and he's just absolutely fine. I feel bad for Maima. He tried to go for the auto lock here. Auto lock on the first uh, artillery was on the minutes because he did not have vision in towards the bush. But nevertheless, here they are still gonna make an attempt down bottom again. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the problem with Damage Show. Oh, His no. sticker didn't go over the wall, and that means Sabat is able to punish the enemy EXP laner. They do lose the tier one, though. Well, that's the problem about Damage Show, right? You are so squishy. Once you go in for the all in push, if you do not get those important caches, this Cho is gonna die out, and oh boys, they're doing a fantastic job at front. Oh, here, but here comes the push! Flicker while charged into the Blazing Duet, into the Numenon Blast! Zav flickers out, but he will he be able to survive? He gets the Nibiru's passion out and trades Barbosa for his life, while Chibi in bottom side dealing with Sonic. They've already lost Sapat as well. This Fredrin chasing down the tanks a lot. Will Chibi be able to escape? Just barely, but guess what? Turtle is up, Madness have full control. L super, super fancy plays as well, but at the same time, Sapa was actually picked off on the sides as well. That's not exactly what Homeboys needed in this situation because Madness Esports, they are losing out a lot of those sap, but eventually, Sonic is in a stage where it's just so hard to kill with. Magma's got 2 0 and 0, and Homeboys, they're trying to funnel all these resources to Anim in order to actually get some sort of footing, and it is a problem for both sides now. Whereas Homeboys, they're looking for opportunity to kill Farsa, they can't find it. That's a big problem, plus one. Man, it's esports. They're doing a fantastic job of doing that, and all they gotta do is buy time for Sonic to come up online and then set up for Maima. But Sonic. Like, I feel like if they just keep trying to rely on putting him online, Hopo is gonna out momentum while Charge comes in, cancels the better airstrike, right? Blazing to it, takes out Maima instantly. Sonic forced the dash back into his base. The tier two now being threatened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna look for the way of the dragon. Perfectly timed iframes from GB doesn't allow him to get it. And yeah, 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 is picked off. Beautiful, beautiful stuff again. And Homeboys once again punish Madness Esports for their overzealousness. And what I'm talking about is that why they chose to fight in this specific moment was the fact that Madness Esports showed two players down, one in mid and one all the way into tier two down bottom where Zap was chipping away the tier two. And as soon as that happens, they saw a perfect green light. Maima is right in front of me. Barbosa is gonna go in for the jump, and that's exactly how Homeboys was able to get this fight. But even then, Madness Esports somehow still manages to trade 50 50s across the map. But this is actually in Homeboys' control now. Again, remember, once a mid game comes around, Homeboys just needs to be somewhat even in net worth. And they're actually ahead, thanks to all the funneling. Unnamed now, 600 gold ahead of Zavs. And this could be a bit of an issue, yeah, 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 especially not getting to do anything this game at the bottom of the network charts, just above the roamers. The damage show needs the snowball, and that's not happening. Well, it is going to be very, very tough here, considering that now... Oh, they get a catch! It's going to be Subbot kicked back into the team. That's what they need to do with the Way of the Dragon. Homeboys now looking to contest Lord. They already taken down the Tier 2 top. Sonic with a two-man taunt. Mali 
Going for the stun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still in the back line as they jump in. Phantom Execution looking for Warlord. Numenum last comes to two members. Sonic and yeah, yeah, yeah. Caught out, but they're able to dash away as Mali jumps in with his own Numenon to stun out Warlord. Final charge. Gonna catch out the Mali as Sonic is picked off with a mega kill. Going to the hands of Anip with GB chasing down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the ends of the earth. Oh, nicely done coming from Madness Esports as well. A little bit disconnected at this moment. Anip popped off. Blazing Duet came in. They look disconnected and because of that disconnection, they're losing members. Maima Ooh. now trying to save the fight! Anip gonna get shut down by Maima with a drive-by there as homeboys. Nothing they can do to save their goal lane. They're gonna go for the tier one in exchange. Oh, that is huge. This is huge for Madness Esports. Me and my homeboys, they got a little bit overconfident. They got a very, very nice pick. But they really, really disrespected how Maima is getting all these kills. And based on these items right now, he's got a Cloud of Destiny and the Lightning Trunkin. While Anip is nowhere clear, close to any sort of MR at all. And that's going to be a problem eventually for homeboys. Because once Maima drops his ultimate, Ooh. he is someone is going to die. Meanwhile, Sonic is going to get isolated here. Yeah, Sapat with the split play pulling him back. Barbosa not going to get kicked away. While Charge denies it, he gets away with the Dragon on the Chibi. Numanam Blast on the Sabat in the back. Backline Barbosa zoning them out, but Sonic has already been taken out. Killing spree for GB. Double kill for GB. Madness Esports forced to make a hasty retreat as the Lord is being escorted by the ranks of the homeboys. They want to push down the top inhibitor. Madness Esports, can they defend? Better death strike. Nibiru's passion cancelled out instantly by the Guardian's barrier. Maima trying his best. Numana Blast gonna patch him out, but Purify makes sure that he's able to walk away for now as GB forced to escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jumping in. Wave the dragon, wrong target, wrong direction, homeboys, no casualties. Oh boy, homeboys, they really, really choked them out in a very, very nice spot as well. Early to the prior fight, they were very patient and taking advantage of this lord advantage that they were given, right? As long as Madness Esports doesn't make drastic changes, homeboys, all they gotta do is wait patiently and the lord will do their job. And they were able to bait out all these rotations and eventually Sonic was chipped away because of how out of position he was. And because of that, Madness Esports, they just completely dropped the ball and homeboys was able to chip them bit by bit. And because of this, they are given even more space now because now you talked about this late game territory. It seems like it is going to happen here because Madness, they're going to try and jump on with Barbosa. Unfortunately, does not have enough damage to do so. Yep, that's a few cooldowns already used with no results there for Madness Esports, making it that much more difficult to try and find any engage at all. Mali, he could be a bit far out here, but homeboys aren't going to engage on the enemy tank. If they can get a pick off in the next few moments, that would be great. But otherwise, their goal for the next few seconds is going to be setting up for that Lord. Yep. And now, when it comes to this, the wind condition coming from homeboys, you can see that they do have those items, right? But from the side of Madness Esports, it feels like man, this damage choke coming from Ye Ye is starting to fall off. He hasn't been able to get those important kicks here to actually get a kill. And as of now, who's the right target he should be able to get the kill here? Because as of now, Warlord and Anip is just completely within, out of his grasp here. And if Ye, Ye can't find those picks on those two targets, it's going to be extremely difficult for this damage hole to actually set up a play for his team. And that's why it's so risky to play Cho as a damage EXP lane. Homeboys, they're just not going to have any contest at all. They get the Lord for free. You can see Ye, Ye, Ye trying to go for the split push, but... He's not going to be able to achieve anything. Already forced to go back and set up the Lunas Lord pushing up top. Yep, 0, 3, and 2 up on Ye Ye Ye. Homeboys perfectly known very well not to fight a 1v1 against the Troll. There's just no point doing so because of the fact that it just gives the advantage to him. But when you do not give it to him, Cho with high and dry pretty much loses all uh, value in terms of the, the 1v1 matchup and homeboys is just very smart at setting the tempo and with Barbosa coming in Madness Esports needs to be a little bit more careful of those Gallant's Barrier because Barbosa was able to cancel not just the Feathered Death Strike but also the Nibiru's Passion when needed when he dropped those Gallant's Barrier. Oh, this could be the final push right now. Will this be Madness's swan song? The Lord gonna be taunted away by Sonic. Sepat actually taking a lot of damage but Feathered Death Strike is cancelled. 
but the Guardian's barrier. Homeboys dancing around the entrance. The madness is based right now. The Lord has been taken out, but so have all the inhibitors from the side of madness. Chibi being very annoying, dashing around, clearing up all the waves. Homeboys wants to end it with this push, but madness, they're still clearing up the waves really well. Sonic gonna be dropped real low, but Homeboys not able to finish things off just yet. Yeah, it's so difficult. Like, I like how Homeboys is very disciplined in this play as well, just because of how Madness Esports still has the potential to actually go in for the shot. And this is the late game that Madness Esports needs, right? They've got the damage, Sonic is a little bit more tankier here, but the problem here is, you talked about late game skating potential. If and only if Yee was the tank troll, maybe it would have been a stalemate, but because Yee Ye is a damage troll, Homeboys needs to be very careful that if Ye Ye, Ye comes in in towards the face of Anim or Warlord, they are gonna get potentially one shot done by this combo. Yeah, specifically this damage Cho is to target a Nip or Chibi. Those are the heroes that he was drafted to try and deal with. Unfortunately, Chibi's iframe timing has just been perfect. He knows exactly when that wave of the dragon is coming out. And all Anip has to do is wait until Ye Ye, Ye is taken out before he goes in because the Cho is just so squishy. Yeah, it is going to be a problem for them, but for now, homeboys, they're just going to choke them in a chokehold into the base. Not going to make this place. The final Lord push is going to be very, very important, but based on that previous Lord push advantage, negative 2,576 EXP was earned. That means Manus Esports was able to get the level lead that they need to scale into the later stage of the game. And this is a problem because eventually Sonic with level 15 means he is even more difficult to kill now compared to before. And now Maima as well as Ye Ye. Divine Glaive as well as the Blade of Despair being purchased means they do have the do tools to threaten everyone from the side of Homeboys. The question is whether or not they can actually push out of their base. Homeboys will be able to end this game with a single Lord because Madness, their base is just empty and they need to contest this right now. But Homeboys have full control over the Lord Pit. Yep, with the Hunter Strike coming in means that Zav will have capabilities here. But look at this, Madness is what they're trying to set a choke point for Homeboys to overextend. But with two bars left, it's going to be tough. Yeah, the Lord gonna be dropping very quickly. Lots of cooldowns used on Subbot, and he's just fine. Bennett's Rage, Feather, Air Strike, they're all gone, and Madness just get nothing from it. Yeah, really smart coming from Homeboys as well. Like, time is pretty much on the essence of Madness Esports, just because of the fact that all the lanes were pretty much shoved in on every single side. And with that being said, means that as long as Homeboys plays it either patiently or rush, it will force Madness Esports to make rash decisions. And when that actually happens, they will be able to pick them off, but with now, everyone is alive here. And pay attention to where Mali is as well. Yep, they're pushing in. Mali, he's looking for the counter engage, but Subba flickers in straight away. Goes for Maima, wants to pick him up. Bennett's Rage onto the Lord. Lumina Blast charged from the back line. Will he get a stun? He gets two. Better air strike, but the Lord is on top of the crystal. Homeboys are looking to end this straight away. Yeah, 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 with the way of the dragon, not gonna stop anything as Homeboys will finish things off and claim victory against Madness Esports. Oh, that was such a game coming from Homeboys. They, things could have looked south here, but they played it smart. They 